I speak to executives a lot, and because of this book, and then when I, when I, I have this one question I put up that I try and get it in their heads what I'm talking about, is I ask yourself this, would your customers shed any tears if you were gone tomorrow? And it's always great to watch them, you know, the minds and the gears clicking and moving around, and it's like, oh, holy shit, maybe not. <laughs> And, and that's what's really important about this notion of what do you matter, what you make or do or provide doesn't matter. Would they give a shit if you stopped existing tomorrow? I was lecturing for a while at Stanford, actually, to engineering students about this, this creative thing called design. And I asked this question to the class, trying to explain this emotional idea. I said, how many of you care if Motorola, this is about the time the iPhone first came out, and I said, how many of you care if Motorola goes out of business tomorrow? and nobody raised their hand. <laughs> I said, how many of you care if Apple goes out of business tomorrow? Of course, everybody raised their hand. So why? Why, does it, why do you care? Why does it matter? Why does this company matter in, in your lives? And you know, it was about how the things made them feel, they felt like they were a part of something, you know, all these very personal things. Very little talk about technology or functionality. After doing this for longer than I'll admit, um, there, I've discovered a few things that really matter, and these are sort of high-level ideas that kind of drive us. And it's this notion of connect, partner, and disrupt. You know, the, the idea of connect is about this relationship with people. I mean, people, you know, we as a species have this crazy relationship with our objects. You know, from the first time, you know, a man picked up a stick and beat his fellow man with it, we sort of fell in love with things. And, and things are a very important part of our lives. And that's something that, that, that you need, it, as a designer, you need to understand that you have this relationship and it's beyond the functionality. It starts to fill purpose and meaning in your life. So, you know, what we try and do is, is figure that out and look for those connections and look for the things that really are meaningful to people in their lives about the stuff that, that we, in fact, create. Um, and then finally, this, this idea of disrupt. And that's, that's really a kind of provocative way to talk about design as strategy. You know, that, that if, if done well, design and, and, and product design can be a hugely disruptive force in the marketplace. You know, underlying technology in things that makes things work and is very, very important. Of course, it's critical. But again and again, you see it's that embodiment into a, a thing that drastically changes the direction of, of, of a market or a business or the world. So we always kind of look to see how we can use our abilities and, and our experience to sort of move companies to new unoccupied space, you know, not try and wedge right in between Dell and HP, but, you know, what's that big wide area out there that nobody's in? Today, more than ever, this idea that you, the idea that you can brand a company, you know, so back to the stories that you can take somebody and wrap some story and, and visuals around them and say they're somebody else's, has always been ridiculous, but today it's more ridiculous than ever. You know, the, the word authentic, authenticity is thrown around way too much, but it really when it gets down to your brand, it has to be that. Okay, a brand is not your logo. It's not your advertising. It's not your corporate identity system. It's not your product. It's none of that. What a brand is, very simply, is a gut feeling. It's what you feel inside about something. And, you know, when you, more than one person has the same gut feeling, you, in fact, have a brand. You cannot control your brand. You can only influence. You cannot control what people feel. And so, it, you know, understanding that is critical. You know, that it's, you just can't do that. But if you're good at it, if you're good at really connecting and communicating who you are, what you do is you shrink the gap, the psychic gap between you, the company, and the, your constituent, the customer. And this relationships develop. And you become more in a brand. You become charismatic. And you know what, this is extremely important because, you know, going back to that slide of all the TVs in Costco, you know, we've moved from this economy of mass production and mass customization and mass commoditization. And you know, what do you have but brands to really, really understand about something and, and feel right about it? So ultimately, you know, what, what makes really great stuff, you know, after all the process and all the talking, is just its passion. It's the fact that you care about what you do and you care about the things that you make, and you care about what you're saying to the outside of the world, and you're going to do what it takes to do something great. That's it. That's really what separates great products from all the rest. You know, because if you don't have that, if that doesn't come through, and all of you know that, in the stuff that you use, you can feel it. You can feel that in a product, that soul. You know, and there's so much soulless stuff out there. 
because people aren't looking you know, really carefully at what they do and what it means and, and that commitment to doing something great. For me, it's like, you know, it's when, when um, I, like most of you here, are a, a chronic Apple customer, and even the difference between an iPad and Android machine, I just don't feel the soul, you know, and that's, and may, maybe it's going to get there, but it's not there yet. You know, what I always like to say is, you know, be yourself, just be a good one. <laughs>